Changing the oil is one of the first maintenance procedures that most technicians learn and 90% of the time the same steps are followed for every car. The other 10% of the time, well, that's what this video is all about. There are several popular cars that now use cartridge oil filters. These are definitely not your 10 minute oil change and failure to follow the proper procedures and use the correct tools can result in engine damage and costly repairs for your shop. You're going to be seeing more and more cartridge filters instead of spin-on canister filters due to environmental regulations around the world. We're going to take a closer look at three prime examples of these unusual oil changes. The General Motors 2.2 liter Ecotec 4-cylinder, the Mazda 2.3 liter 4-cylinder, and the Hyundai or Kia 3.3 liter and 3.8 liter V6 engines. Let's start with the GM Ecotec. The GM Ecotec engine is used in a lot of GM cars, everything from the Chevy Cobalt to the Pontiac Solstice. It has a relatively easy to service cartridge oil filter. It's located underneath this engine cover, which we have to remove first. The cover is very simple to remove. You remove the oil cap and lift up on the cover and set it aside. <clears throat> Alright, we've got our engine cover removed and here's the location of this oil filter, right here underneath this plastic cap. Here's the correct procedure to follow when you're changing the oil on an Ecotec. First, position the appropriate drain pan under the engine sump and remove the drain plug. Okay, we're going to let the engine oil drain now. While the oil is draining, move around to the top of the engine and remove the cap on the oil filter housing. Here's where you have to be careful. It looks like you could just use a standard 32 millimeter socket on the hex nut that's molded into the top of the filler cap, or maybe even an open end wrench. Don't. You need to use a special low profile or short 32 millimeter socket. It's available from Matco, Kent Moore, Lyle, and many other tool suppliers. So what's the big deal about this special short socket? If you use a standard 32 millimeter socket like this one, it can interfere with the intake manifold when you loosen the cap. If you notice how close it is right here, as soon as you start to unscrew this, this cap will hit this manifold and it could potentially crack this plastic intake manifold. Now that you've loosened it properly, remove the cap and the filter and discard the filter properly. Take another minute to make sure the oil is drained out of the filter housing. If not, you've got some more investigating to do. There may be something plugging the hole at the bottom of the housing. It doesn't look like we have this problem, so let's move along. Before you proceed, you want to inspect the cap and make sure there's no cracks or gouges from previous service work. You also want to make sure that the O-ring at the top is intact. Okay, we got our O-rings lubed up with some clean engine oil. Now we snap the cartridge back into the top of the cap and we're going to place it down into the housing and screw it in by hand because we want to make sure that little tip on the bottom goes into the hole that it's supposed to go in. It's very easy to feel when you cruise, screw it in by hand as opposed to putting it in with a wrench. Next we're going to hand tighten it with our socket. Okay, we got it hand tight. Okay, then we're going to use the same torque wrench setting, 18 foot pounds or 24 newton meters, to tighten up this cap. That makes sure that it's tight enough to seal, it's not over tightened or under tightened. Next, we're going to reinstall the oil pan drain plug by hand, run it in, and then we're going to tighten it up to 18 foot pounds or 24 newton meters with a torque wrench. Okay, next we're going to fill the engine with the correct quantity and grade of engine oil. Next we're going to start the car, wait for the engine oil light to go off, 
we'll let it run for a few minutes and then we're going to shut it down and we'll check the oil. After we let it sit for a minute to let the oil drain back, I'm going to pull the stick out, wipe it off, check to make sure we got the proper oil level. It looks like it's good. The last thing we're going to do is check for leaks underneath. Remember, failure to follow the procedures on this particular car can definitely lead to trouble.